As we live in this life, we forget and we lose a lot of stuff. I don't know about you, I also lost many, many things. Once we had an entire family trip to Korea, and I was carrying an envelope of about $800 in cash to spend it on our family, but I misplaced it, and I forgot where I put it, and I completely lost, and I, I lost it until today. And I was uh, rebuked by my wife, and more than twice I lost my keys, and more than three times I lost my wallet. And because I travel often to overseas, once I left my passport in the pouch of the chair right in front of me, and I just found out um, when I was uh, laying over in the city of Istanbul. So I consulted with a clerk of Turkish Airlines, and I told them I left my passport, and I waited up for about three hours for a crew to go back to the plane and get my passport. But fortunately, the layover hours were long, so I was able to have my passport return back to me. But also once again in the Turkish airline, I left my iPad in the pouch. But this time, I was not able to have it back to me. Probably I lost many, many things throughout my life. Uh, we do that too. And a couple of you might be thinking, oh, Pastor Shine, he, lo he loses so many things. He's a crumbsy, repent. Um, all of us lose stuff. But more importantly, as a Christians, what if we lose not like watch or money, wallet, keychains, or things like that? They're not that important. How about, as a Christians, we lose passion. We lose a faith. We lose a hope. We lose a first love. We lose a holiness. These are more important stuff as a Christians, but we move on with our life after we lose these things. Some people never have a desire to return have them return back to them so as life goes on. But it will be so pity as a Christians, we lose these things and we just spend our days here on earth and then we go home to our heavenly Father. That will be really pitiful. As we continue on with our Bible time, we are reading the stories, amazing stories of the prophet called Elisha. As we know, he received a double portion of anointing from his master, Eliza. Eliza performed exactly eight miracles during his ministry time, and Elisha exactly doubled the miracles, and he performed 16 miracles throughout his ministry time. And after he performed the miracles, like he asked the Naaman, Syrian general, because he suffered with the leprosy, to go and dip your body seven times in the river of Jordan. And as he first responded with anger, but by the recommendations of his servants, he dipped his body seven times in the river of Jordan, and he completely received the healing. And also, there was a certain widow. Her husband was one of the prophets, but he died. And she was uh, deeply indebted with the money. And she had a hard time surviving. The only item she had was a jar of oil. And Elisha told her, why don't you go borrow many, many, as many empty vessels as possible. And then... Bring them to your home, shut the door behind you with your son, and pour the oil into the empty vessels. And it will not stop. Continually fill all the empty vessels until she ran out of empty bottles. 
So he already performed the numerous miracles, and because of that, probably drew many, many men to the school of prophet. And many men came to Elisha to learn from him, to receive a similar uh, anointing and, and intercede for wicked nation. At the time, uh, the nation was still wicked in the eyes of the Lord. And because so many prophets were learning in the school, the place they were staying became straight too small. They probably stayed in Gilgal. So they came to Elisha asking, the place we are staying is too small. Why don't we go to Jordan and cut the wood and with the beams, let's make a larger room. Elisha said, go ahead. But they said, Elisha, why don't you come with us? Okay, I will. And they went there. And one of the prophets, he borrowed axe. And as he was cutting the wood, the iron X head fell into the river, and he called out, Allah's master, it was a borrowed. And then Elisha said, after he cut up a branch of a tree and cast it into the water, and that iron X head began to float, and it floated above the surface of water, and he said it to the prophet, go ahead, fetch it. That's the story. It's a simple but amazing, miraculous story. And from this story that we want to apply to our own life. The question is, what have you lost in your life? Especially as a Christian, God bids us to live life abundantly. Especially in our spirituality. God wants us to enjoy joy, love, and peace, faith, courage, boldness, passion, freedom, love, and even miracles in our life. But what have you lost? Have you lost the innocence in Christ? Have you lost the passion? Have you lost the dream? Have you lost the faith? Have you lost the first love? Have you lost the boldness? What have you lost in Christ Jesus? Perhaps with this story, which was impossible for iron X head to float above the surface, but God did through Elisha. If that was possible, whatever we have lost in our life can be restored back to us. Not only to full measurement, even greater measurement, it is possible. So let's hope in the Lord. So as we turn our Bible to 2 Kings chapter 6, that's the story we are going to take a look at and try to apply to our own personal life. So let's read this passage together. 2 Kings chapter 6 from verse 1 through 7. And the sons of the prophets said to Elisha, See now, the place where we dwell with you is too small for us. Please let us go to the Jordan, and let every man take a beam from there, and let us make there a place where we may dwell. So he answered, Go. Then one said, Please consent to go with your servants. And he answered, I will go. So he went with them, and when they came to the Jordan, they cut down trees. But as one was cutting down a tree, the iron axe head fell into the water, and he cried out and said, Alas, master, for it was borrowed. So the man of God said, Where did it fall? And he showed him the place. So he cut off a stick and threw it in there, and he made the iron float. Verse 7 all together. Therefore, Therefore he, he said, said, Pick it up for yourself. yourself. So, so he, he reached out his hand and, and took it. it. Amen. Life goes on, and these prophets got together, and they wanted to have a bigger place. Just like today's uh, servants of God probably live a life of poverty. These are prophets, as they dwelt most likely in Gilgal, the place they stayed was too small, and they wanted to build uh, a place nearby the river of Jordan, cutting down the wood, and by their own hands, they will be building bigger house to stay in. 
and they lead life of poverty. Just like uh, today, many pastors, they just uh, enjoy life of serving God and serving God's people. They don't mind going through the life of poverty. And one of the prophets was so poor, he couldn't even possess his own axe head. So he had to borrow axe from somebody else. And just like any other prophets, they are cutting down the wood and making beams, putting together to make a larger house to stay uh, together and be trained and be disciplined and also be educated by their master, Elisha. While they were doing it, just happened to work hard to cut the wood down and accidentally the iron axe head flung out of the wooden stick and went inside a river of Jordan and it sunk into it. So it was impossible to find it. Why? Archaeologists and scholars say more than 2,000 years ago, even probably about 3,000 years ago, River of Jordan was much wider, wider than today's. Those are people who visited Israel recently. You can go to River of Jordan. You can see it's a very narrow river. But back then, it was much wider and the stream, the water probably flew much more speedily. The velocity was much higher. So for you to go into the water and swim in, and back then they didn't have a snorkeling system, and try to find the iron axe head, it was almost impossible because the stream was too strong. And not only that, once the iron lands inside a river, you know, as you can see, under the ground, it's a muddy and dusty layers of dust and probably sank in, which makes it impossible for you to uh, find it. So that's why this person, prophet, was devastated. And not only that, this was a borrowed. It was not even his own. So he was in trouble. So that's why he had to call out, Allah's master, it was a borrowed. Our life is like that. Life moves on. We are diligently working for a company. We are making our living. We are trying to serve our children, our wives with the food. And along the way, we lose. Sometimes we lose our health. Sometimes we lose our passion. Sometimes we lose our dream. And as a Christian, so often, because of our responsibilities and daily chores and business of our life and temptations uh, strike us here and there, and we lose our own axe head. Axe has a cutting edge. And without axe, if this man continually trying to cut the wood, that's impossible. That's a foolishness. Sometimes we don't even recognize we lost the cutting edge axe head in our career, in our ministry, in our life, in our relationships, in any situation, we just use this wooden stick and, and try to cut the wood down. It's ineffective. It's very, it becomes tiresome. And especially as a Christians, if we lose our anointing, if we lose hope, we will lose faith, we lose joy of salvation, and also oftentimes we lose excitement. So coming to church is a drudgery. And we just serving God is just merely a responsibility. There's no excitement. There's no joy. And we lost where we began. We're supposed to be motivated by the love of Christ. But now we don't know why we are even serving in departments or worshiping God. And life moves on. And we lost our X ahead. Not necessarily because we sinned against God. This man probably passionately trying to cut the wood and it flung out of the wooden stick just like that. Life happens to move on and we lose stuff. We lose stuff. For me personally, as I was meditating this passage, one thing that I lost, I recognize, is the innocence in Christ Jesus. 
I lost innocency as a Christian. In 1991, I accepted Christ as a Savior. I was so excited meeting God every day, reading the Bible, numerous promises, and I tried to apply to our, my daily living. And I prayed for everything, almost everything. You know, because I just recently accepted Christ as a Savior, coming to Sunday service in the morning was still challenging. Why? Because I enjoyed watching football games on Sunday morning. I was a big fan of Broncos because I was from Denver. And I remember I didn't compromise. I continually came to Sunday worship, but I said to my in my heart, why is a Sunday worship always on Sunday morning and conflicted with the football games? But anyways, uh, there was Bronco. They went through the playoff games. So I think it was Saturday night, so I was able to watch the game. And as I was watching the game, and back then, the quarterback for Broncos was John Elway. If you remember him, you are as old as I am. And uh, as I was watching, uh, we were losing. We were losing the game. And it was approaching the end, and we only had a few minutes left. And I was uh, fervently praying to God, God, help Broncos to win this game. While I was watching this uh, football game, I was on my knees, and I was praying to God. God, help John Elway to, to make a, have a touchdown. So I was fervently praying, and I ended up making vow. And I said to God, God, if you help John Elway make a touchdown, then I'm going to preach the gospel today to this man. And before my eyes, miracle began to happen. So John Elway, we had a two minutes left. He grabbed the ball, and he was about to uh, throw it to wide receiver. But instead, he grabbed the ball, and he began to run. And he began to run, and guess what happened? Touchdown. And we are behind about three points, and by touchdown, we won the game. See, I'm still saying we won the game, not the Broncos. <laughs> I haven't seen the football game for ages. But until today, I didn't keep that vow. So if anyone knows the contact information of John Arroway, please let me know his email. I will send a gospel message to him. But I was that much innocent. I will pray for anything. I will drive on the highway and someone cuts in instead of cussing him. I will pray for his salvation. I look around the people. I was genuinely concerned and had a compassion for the lost souls. And I will ask this question, is he saved? Is she saved? I will ask these questions. You know, back then, I still watched the Korean dramas. And I rented a room from a Christian widow, and she had uh, two children about my age. And I was renting the room, and she would rent a video, Korean drama, every weekend. And I would watch uh, the Korean drama together with her. And I still remember the title of that Korean drama, weekend drama, was called Mother's Ocean, Ammaya Bada. And I would watch it together with her, and inside of my heart, I will be praying for all the actors and actresses, their salvation. Because I was genuinely concerned. During the early morning prayer, I will pray, and sometimes with a weeping, pray for those actors and actresses for their salvation. They entertain me, but I need to intercede for them so they can be saved and they go to heaven. And if anything is wrong, and I will pray for the system and equipment for, for repairs and all these things. You know how we had a glitch, glitch, you know, when we are singing uh, praises with a screen? Because I remembered how I in, innocent I was, I pray for that, to get it fixed. 
And I think after my prayer, it didn't glitch anymore. Do you believe? Oh, your little faith. <laughs> so I recognized I lost innocence. I lost the innocence. I do have a greater knowledge of the Bible, much, much more than before. But the innocence is lost. How about you? What have you lost? You lose hope? Did you lose a passion? You used to jump and down, genuinely being excited and worshiping God. But nowadays, when you come to Sunday worship, it's so difficult for you to even raise the volume of your voice as you try to worship Him. What happened to you? What happened to your passion? Have you lost the dream? You had a big vision of serving God and serving nations. But somehow along the way, you lost that vision or dream. Have you lost the holiness? Some of you, because you live life of compromise, sinning against God, rebelling against God, continually disobeying God, so your heart has become so heavy, it became just like iron acid. Your heart has drowned into the water and inside of mud, and your heart is so heavy. Even coming to Sunday worship is so treasury. There's no joy of worshiping Him. There's no joy of coming to church or serving God in different capacities. It's all duty. It's all responsibility. There's no excitement. There's no joy of salvation. And first love is long gone. And also, hope is gone. In the book of Proverbs, chapter 13, verse 12, there it says, Hope deferred makes the heart sick. But when the desire comes, it is a tree of life. As I was praying last night, particularly this verse stood out in my heart, recognizing many of us, even in this sanctuary, in our ministry, the hope has been deferred for a long time. So it makes the heart sick. So physically, we may not be sick. But some of us, because the hope has been deferred for a long time, our hearts are sick. Our hearts are ill. Because the hope has been deferred. But that can be restored. When hope is restored, when the desire comes, it becomes a tree of life. But are we willing? Are we willing to ask God to restore what we have lost? We may lose money. It's okay. We can earn it back. We may lose a key. It's okay. We can rekey it. We may lose a wallet. We may lose a passport. It's okay. We can reissue it. But more importantly, as a Christians, in regards to spirituality, hope can be lost. Faith can be lost. The first love is lost. Joy is lost. Excitement is lost. Direction is lost. People are confused. Yes, they come to church church on Sunday, but their hearts are sick because hope is lost. Are you that one? But let's reclaim that. Let's come before God. Because this is a simple miracle, God, when he created the heavens and earth, in this natural realm, there's a certain principle it is called the law of physics. There is a law of gravity. When the iron X head falls to the ground, the first law of physics is it will remain under rest unless a force from outside is pushed. Then that thing is moved. It is impossible for the 
iron axhead that is drowned deep inside the water. And also, river of Jordan is heavily and speedily flowing. Of course, it's impossible unless outsourced force is put upon that iron axhead to make it come out of water. But God is not bound by his own principle. Yes, he invests in the natural realm, the natural law of physics, but he can violate it. But that's not illegal for him. He can do that because he's the God. He is the God of the universe. So when we lose hope, typically we lose hope by looking at the circumstances, by looking at the system. By looking at situation, so we make a conclusion in our hearts, it's impossible. We lost it. I don't think it's going to work. I don't think my dream will come to pass. I don't think what I've been praying, it's been delayed, will happen. You know, oftentimes I hear from singers complaints, Pastor Shine, we don't have a, enough single brothers here or single sisters there, whatever it may be. You look at the situation and you be, become discouraged and you lose a hope. And that's just one example in your career, in your relationships, in your family setting, towards your children, in our own ministry. We look at the circumstances and the physics and we make a conclusion in our heart and we lose hope. Hope is a deferred and our hearts become sick. But that's not what God desires. If God can violate law of physics and he can come up with the wrong physics and which we call it miracles. If he can have iron X ahead that is put down and sunk in to the river of Jordan and covered by the mud and bring it about without any force. He can override our situation. He can override government. He can override our economy. He can override any kind of human infrastructure, social system, situation circumstance, and he can bypass my inability and have everything restored back to me. Not to only full measurement, even greater measurement, he can do that because it was God who installed the principle and he violated it. And that can be activated by our request, our desire, and our faith. And he did it. He did it through Elisa. What have you lost? Have you lost the hope? Have you lost the direction? Have you lost the vision? Have you lost the faith? Have you lost the first love? Have you lost the passion? But are you content with this life that you are going to move on in this condition, dissatisfied, unhappy, grumbling, complaining, hopelessness. And life moves on. But that's not life God wants us to enjoy with. This man, after he lost that iron axe head, he exclaimed, it was a borrowed. Perhaps our life Itself is a power from God. God created the universe. God is the source of life. He gave us 80 years and 100 years. We are renting years from God here on earth to accomplish His will, to accomplish His mission, to accomplish His vision. The life here on earth is borrowed by God. And if we lose a hope, if we lose a vision, if we lose a dream, if we lose a passion, then life that we borrowed from God has been lost. Yes, physically I live. Yes, physically I breathe. Yes, physically I can eat. 
Yes, physically I pay the rent and I drive my car. But the, that's not life that I borrowed from God that I should live here on earth. His design, His intention for you and I is to live, to live life to maximum, to live life abundantly, to give a glory to Him. With the excitement, with the joy, with the faith, with the love, with the peace, with the full of hope, and also with the innocence. But have we lost hope? And just move on with life like that, thinking, I'm content with this. But we can live life against all odds. If God can bring up and have I and X head float, our life can float too. If your heart has been sunk into the water, God can lift your heart up again. And so your eyes and hearts may be fixed upon Him. You see, Elisha took the branch and took the branch of the wood and cast into the water. See, it was not the stick that drew the iron exit to float. It was his feet. He probably, when he was casting that stick into the water, inside of his heart, he probably prayed to God, God, let this iron exit float above water. He prayed, trusting God, because God always answers his prayers. Perhaps he was casting this stick to the location where about the axe was lost, calling the angels of the Lord. See angels? That's where axe head is lost. You swim inside the water and you take that axe head we have a name of Jesus Christ. The name of Jesus Christ is given to us. And with this name, whatever we have lost, we can reclaim and ask God to restore them back to us. If you shall ask anything in my name, I will do it, Jesus said. We long for new wine. And we can ask God to give us a new wineskin. Let our hearts become new wineskin so that God may pour in His new wine upon our life. And also, in the city of Cana, Jesus performed the very first miracle by turning the water into wine. Typically, the better wine is consumed in the beginning. So after people got drunk and worse wine is served, and they cannot recognize it because they are already drunk. But Jesus weighs it completely opposite. He can, from the beginning, can give us new wine. But he can also save a choice of wine until the last. In our life, you and I have experienced miracles and grace of God. We may be content with the early rain, but God is designing and wanting to pull down the choice the wine to us and later rain, which is far stronger. But do we desire it? Do we desire it? Or are we going to be content with a lost anointing, lost hope, lost vision, lost direction, lost faith, and lost first love, and lost excitement? And just live a mundane, Christian, boring life, carrying no testimony at all. When the people in the world, unsaved unbelievers, ask us, what's been up to you with your life? Are we ready to share testimonies, endless testimonies, which we can because God is able. But we are just content, satisfied, even though so many things are stolen and lost 
life moves on. I eat today and I die tomorrow. That's one pathetic Christian life. We're going to spend here on earth. But we are not going to do that. The stick, the branch, Elisha took it off that from that tree. Perhaps it represents the cross of Lord Jesus Christ. And from that cross, Jesus himself took a branch off and gave this stick to you and I. And it's called name of Jesus Christ. Whether this name you can cast the demons out. Whether this name you can ask anything. And I shall do it for you. The question is, do we desire to use his name to restore what we have lost? We are about to end the year 2019 as we welcome year 2020. Are we going to welcome year 2020 while still we are lost? Or are we willing to stand up from our weak knees and we claim as child of God, as a Christian, things that are lost and bring him back to our life and live life with excitement and testimonies. That's our choice. That's our choice. Let's all rise. Think about what you have lost. We don't need to know exactly where we lost it. But if we can recognize we lost it, then we can desire it back. One of the problems with the Christians often is they don't recognize they lost it. They're too stubborn to acknowledge they lost the joy, they lost the peace, they lost the love, they lost the passion, they lost the dream, they lost the hope. With their pride, they cannot acknowledge they lost it. So they continue on in their lost condition. But humility will begin to find what we have lost. In the name of Jesus, God, I lost my innocence. God, I lost my first love. God, I lost my passion. God, I lost the direction. I'm confused and I'm lost. God, I lost excitement. God, I lost the joy. But in the name of Jesus, in the name of Jesus, I ask you, Betty, I ask you, Father, to have him return back to my heart, back to my life. Whatever it is, can we reclaim it and back to our hearts, back to our lives by calling his name? Let's ask him. He can bring them back. It didn't take too long to have I and X head to float. It will not take long if our heart is genuine and our desire is sincere and we come in the name of Jesus to ask the Father to have these return back to us. Shall we call his name? One, two, three. Jesus, Jesus. Jesus, so Jesus, I lost my innocence. God, I lost.